now and i'll start the class okay so the topic today given is iron deficiency anemia so so iron deficiency anemia just a second okay so here today uh, we will just discuss um, on these topics that is we'll just uh, speak about the basic physiology of iron absorption it's a uh, transport and uh, storage then we will uh, study about the causes of iron deficiency and uh, the compensatory responses seen in clinical lab test and uh, finally the modalities of treatment that we have for iron deficiency for the treatment of iron deficiency anemia okay So first, I'll just talk to you about uh, the iron distribution. Uh, so first of all, um, the major role of um, iron is mainly to carry oxygen, okay, as a part of the hemoglobin. And um, we take in dietary iron through our food, okay? And uh, the iron is mostly absorbed in the duodenum and uh, also in the proximal part of the small intestine. And uh, once the iron absorption takes place, the transferrin is basically the transport form of iron that helps the transport protein, the transport formation form of iron. Iron for for, for transport, it's uh, this is this is it's it's mainly through this transferrin that iron gets transported to various parts of the body. So uh, the iron gets uh, is utilized mainly in the muscle and um, via myoglobin in the muscle and also it's utilized in the bone marrow and from there the rbc's are released and uh, the circulating erythrocytes that you know uh, hemoglobin uh, and then from there uh, the iron like rbc's usually stay have like have a lifespan of 120 days and then ultimately uh, it is uh, destroyed through phagocytosis by the reticuloendothelial system, the RBCs. So again, storage uh, amount of iron is stored also in the body. That's mainly in the liver, in the uh, reticuloendothelial system also, RES cells also, it is stored later on. Even after the RBCs rupture, uh, the iron but gets Get, goes into the reticuloendothelial cell. So a, form, a certain amount of iron is stored in the body. It is also transported in the body, okay? And it is also utilized, okay? So this is how iron is distributed. Uh, so hemoglobin in the RBC, right? So here we have, um, here you can see in this picture, there are, this is the iron atom. And this is the heme. The hemoglobin has two components. That's the heme part as well as the globin part. The globin part is mainly the proteins, right? So globin is a protein. And here we have the heme. Uh, heme is mainly a porphyrin ring containing the iron atom here. So this is the heme and it contains the iron atom. And you have the globin chains, the hemoglobin, the globin chains here, the beta globins and the alpha globins. So each hemoglobin molecule, it can bind four oxygen molecules okay each hemoglobin molecule can bind four oxygen molecules at the heme site okay so four oxygen molecules are bound at the heme site so iron is present in the heme portion of the hemoglobin the main role of iron is to carry oxygen as a part of hemoglobin Now coming to the iron absorption. So like I told iron absorption in the previous picture, mainly iron is absorbed in the duodenum as well as in the uh, proximal part or the brush border of the upper small in the intestine, okay? And the absorption also is enhanced by the gastric acid. Uh, iron absorption can be hindered by tannins. Tannins are mainly uh, tea, tea or beverages, okay? These all contain tannins. Phytates are mainly your bran or cereals, grains, all this can interfere with the iron absorption in our body. And if there's any systemic inflammation going on in the body, that also affects iron absorption. The importance is how much of iron is absorbed in the, by the body. That's the whole point, you know? 
we take iron but needs to be absorbed also so most of the dietary iron that we take diet mostly it's from the diet only we can we get the source of iron is only through diet so uh, from the diet we get the non heme form of iron also and the heme form of iron also the non heme form of iron is from the plant sources uh, so it, but it has only less than 5% of the bioavailability bioavailability is the amount of iron that is available in its active form right in the body so only uh, the non heme form is mainly obtained from the plant sources and there is less than 5% bioavailability for the body and less than 10% of the dietary iron is in the heme form mostly animal proteins or animal sources from the iron that you get from those animal pro animal sources has more of uh, more than 25% bioavailability and you get the heme form of iron from the animal sources all right so now coming to the other related iron components that we have in our body we have the transferrin like i said transferrin is the uh, a transport protein plasma iron transporter protein it is mainly it helps in the transport of protein in the body then we have is the ferritin form ferritin form is mainly for storage form of iron uh, we have it in the ferritin form and the third form we have is the hemosiderin hemosiderin is the long term iron storage pool forms are in mainly present in the body in the form of hemosiderin so now coming to the iron storage iron storage as i told you storage is in the form of ferritin serum ferritin levels tell about how much of storage of iron we have in our body uh, so it is primarily an intracellular protein and some you can find in the plasma also mostly the plasma protein is the transferrin protein that is the transport protein and the hemosiderin is the insoluble form of ferritin and it is visible microscopically so usually hemosiderin can be See, to see hemoxidrin we can find out in the bone marrow uh, by looking for the iron stores in there by the prussian blue strain that we use we can find about the hemoxidrin um presence whether the marrow has got sufficient iron or not uh, we can find out uh, microscopically only mainly from the bone marrow we can detect hemoxidrin now coming to the iron cycle so the iron cycle um so we have the erythrocytes here uh, the average lifespan of erythrocytes is 120 days and um, these reticular endothelial cells once their lifespan is over they go to the reticular endothelial system now in the reticular endothelial system uh, the red cells they undergo phagocytosis okay so erythrocyte destruction by the macrophages take place here okay so and uh, once uh, it's de they're destroyed it divides gets divided into heme and the globin part the globin part goes into the amino acid pool whereas uh, the globin the heme part that is there it goes to the surface of the or the iron iron that is there in the heme part it goes to the reticular endothelial cell where again it is uh, presented as a circulating transferrin okay so that's how uh, it is efficient and it is highly conserved in the recycling of iron from senescent red cells from the red cells that are destroyed after their 120 days of lifespan the iron is still available in the circulating transferrin form and that's how iron is efficiently and highly conserved in the recycle recycling of iron in our body okay so so in that around iron of 20 mg per day can be destroyed i mean it gets lost okay so each milliliter of red cells they contain one milligram of elemental iron now what is elemental iron elemental iron is the amount of iron that can get absorbed by the body right so um so this iron around 20 mg per day is lost once this rbcs are destroyed once their lifespan is over and um, we need to get uh, adult male will need to absorb at least one m milligram of elemental di elemental iron daily to meet his needs whereas a uh, females in the childbearing ages they need to absorb an average of about 1.4 milligram per day that is the elemental iron body requires per day that much of iron i mean iron through our dietary supplements all right so we need iron in around one to two milligram per day for females 1.4 and for an adult male one milligram per day is required is needed 
So this is the plasma ion pool then, it gets stored in the liver, all right? And, um, and this is the trans transferrin is a transport form of iron and erythrocyte production takes place in the bone marrow. So we need additional iron must be available for the maximum proliferation of erythroid marrow response. And, uh, and with markedly stimulated erythropoiesis, demands for iron is also increased to six to eight fold, okay? This is the iron cycle. Now coming to iron losses. So iron is closely conserved in humans. Like I said, a, 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 a recycling takes place in the body, even after red blood cells are destroyed in the reticular endothelial system, transferrin, transport iron is still available. Okay, so iron, so very small amounts of iron is lost in urine, bile, and sweat. And even from the cells, uh, you know, iron is shed from the skin, uh, the intestinal, and the genitourinary tracts. Uh, also, menstrual blood loss can cause loss of iron. And also, there is a lot of iron loss in pregnancy and lactation. Other than these, there is no iron loss from the body as such that takes place. Okay, this is the physiological forms, physiological ways in which iron can be lost from our body. Now coming to the causes of iron deficiency. So the causes could be, there could be an increased demand for iron. Where there's an increased demand for iron? When in infancy, when there is a rapid growth spurt taking place, or in adolescence also, when it's the growing ages, growing periods, you need a lot of iron for the growth of the body. Other than that, there is an increased demand for iron in menstruation, in pregnancy, there is an increased demand for iron, especially in the second and third trimesters of pregnancy. Secondly, where we can be, where there is a reason for iron deficiency is when, when there is a decreased iron intake. And that is in dietary supplements are very poor. There is no proper in sufficient dietary supplements or proper diet. Uh, you're not taking da daily adequate iron in your daily supplements daily food intake so and when there is a diet in where there is a low uh, diet that is low in heme iron so when it is um, so when there is an when such lacking is there uh, there will be not pr proper quality iron might you can say heme iron or that is actually where there's a more bioavailability that is there it's not there it again affects uh, leads, it can lead to iron deficiency anemia the third reason is Uh, third reason is when there is an inadequate absorption of iron, some problem in the absorption problem in the body. Poor bioavailability, I said. Suppose if you are taking antacids, it can affect with the absorption of iron. When there is, a, if iron is iron tablets or iron supplements are taken along with phytates and tannins, like I said, or, or even starch, right? It can affect the absorption of iron in the body. If there is any bowel surgery done, absorption can be affected it cannot be affected it cannot be absorbed by the duodenum and the proximal part of the intestine if there is any celiac disease if there is any absorption malabsorption syndromes like celiac disease inflammatory bowel diseases intrinsic enterocyte defects so all this can affect the absorption of iron even if adequate intake is there the fourth reason is if there is any loss the loss of iron if there is any loss of blood either through the gastrointestinal or any sources where blood is lost from the body, any genitourinary laws, menorrhagia, pulmonary laws, or any other trauma, road traffic accidents, excessive phlebotomy. So in these conditions or, uh, you know, where blood is lost from the body through various sources, there can be loss of iron also along with blood loss. So these are the conditions where there can be loss of iron from the body. So coming to the features of iron deficiency anemia now. So it again depends on the rate and degree of the development of anemia. Uh, symptoms mainly is fatigue, weakness, there can be dizziness, irritability, reduced exercise capacity, palpitations, all these are uh, symptoms that the patient can come with. 
Now coming to the other features like the signs, what are the signs? When you see a patient having anemia, what are the signs? They can be pallor, patient will be extremely pale, a uh, patient can give a history of pica, that is a craving of non-food substances like clay, dirt. Then on examination, the patient can have glossitis, that's a smooth, shiny tongue. The patient can have restless legs, angular stomatitis, that is chelosis, cracking on the corners of the mouth. Then coilonychia can be there, that is thin, brittle, spoon-shaped fingernails that you can see. Or platinychia, flat-shaped nails. Flat shaped nails, coilonychia, spoon shaped brittle nails, glossitis, chelosis, pallor, all these are the signs of anemia. So now coming to the uh, test for the iron deficiency. So, what test will you do? So, we can definitely look at the peripheral blood smear. What will a peripheral blood smear in an iron deficiency patient look like? Now they'll be having marked hypochromasia and microcytic hypochromic anemia. The red, red blood cells, their size is smaller. They can have hypochromasia, a lot of pallor inside the uh, RBCs that's said uh, described as hypochromasia. So microcytic hypochromic anemia will be there in the peripheral blood smear. Uh, the red blood cell indices, the mean corpus club volume, uh, the MCV and MCH will be reduced. Serum ferritin levels, the storage forms, the ferritin levels, the storage form of iron will be reduced. We can check a serum iron level. Serum iron also will be reduced in the blood. The transparent, um, serum iron by transparent is an iron saturation. The transparent uh, levels or the TIBC, usually it's known as the total iron binding capacity is only the Actually, it's the measure of total iron binding capacity is the TIBC is the measure of the circulating transferrin. That's the transport form of iron. So that will be uh, reduced. Uh, in iron deficiency anemia, the, the TIBC or the transferrin value will be actually increased. It will be increased. Okay. Then bone marrow iron stain. That's the Prussian blue stain which I spoke about. So uh, these are a few tests that you can run uh, for finding out for iron deficiency anemia. So initially sequential changes that is there in iron deficiency anemia. Well, first what happens is that patient will not come with an overt anemia. It is a long going, ongoing process. So initially the ferritin levels will start to deplete. Okay, that time the iron saturation and HB hemoglobin all will be normal. That's when the storage starts depleting. So initially you'll find a uh, a depletion or a decrease in the ferritin levels and then in iron deficiency uh, the iron saturation it starts to fall and then in full-fledged iron deficiency anemia there will be uh, ferritin will be low the TIBC will be um, will be high that's the transport protein but iron saturation will be low and the MCV or hemoglobin will be full-fledged it will be low. It will start depicting only towards the full-fledged state that uh, the hemoglobin will start to drop. Initially, first, the storage form starts to drop. So how will a CBC or a complete blood count look like in an iron deficiency anemia? So the complete blood count, you will look for the hemoglobin. Patient will be having anemia. It will be low. Hematocrit that is there. Uh, that is the amount of volume in compared to the total body volume blood uh, RBC mass, uh, the hematocrit will be low, the MCV, MCH will be low, and the red cell distribution width will be high. The other lab values you can check for is definitely the iron profile that we call it. That is the serum iron, ferritin, and TIBC together. We uh, talk about it as the iron profile. Okay, so serum iron levels will be low the ferritin levels will be low and TIBC is high and transparent saturation will be low. So now coming to the differential diagnosis that we have. So when coming to the differential diagnosis, First, we have we had the three main differential diagnoses for iron deficiency anemia is thalassemia trait. Thalassemias are basically there is an imbalance in the globin chain production. 
so in thalassemia there will be a low mcv just like iron deficiency anemia but they will have a normal red cell distribution width and whereas red cell distribution width is high in uh, iron deficiency anemia coming to the transferrin saturations it can be normal or it can be increased iron levels they can have increased iron levels or normal iron levels second differential diagnosis is anemia of inflammation or also called as anemia of chronic disease these anemias they will not have microcytic hypochromic peripheral blood picture but they will have a normocytic normochromic peripheral blood smear the tibc and transferrin saturation will be low uh, the ferritin levels will be normal or increased over here and the third differential diagnosis is myelodysplastic syndrome here also the ferritin levels will be normal but they can have a microcytic hypochromic picture in the peripheral smear so these are the three differential diagnoses uh, and how you differentiate between the between them and iron deficiency anemia this is just a picture of the iron stain of bone marrow here you can see uh, the prussian blue stain these i can see the here these are the visible ferritin granules that is there in the cytoplasm these are the visible uh, ferritin granules that you have whereas in an iron deficient marrow the prussian blue stain there is no um, there is no there is no visible ferritin granules all right this is now uh, going to the treatment part coming to the treatment part uh, so most patients who are asymptomatic or um, um, just found out via blood test or through ferritin level that they have an iron deficiency anemia through blood test uh, they are treated initially with oral iron there for them oral iron is oral iron unless there's an absorption problem so i told you one of the causes for iron deficiency anemia could be if there is an absorption problem also can result in iron deficiency anemia provided that their absorption is good enough so uh treatment we can give through dietary sources we give them diet counseling and also iron sulfate tablets we can give it on a bd dose basis and always advise them not to take it with meals preferably iron is best iron tablets are best absorbed uh if taken um before i mean in on empty stomach or not not it's not to be taken with meals if a tds dose can be very constipating and can cause gastric distress and that could be one of the commonest cause for non compliance all the side effects causes uh, sometimes non compliance so keeping it to a bd dose will be all right bd or od dose at least so iv iron is no longer dangerous uh, the newer formulations such as iron sucrose low molecular weight iron dextran and ferric gluconate have minimal risk of infusion reactions so um, previously there was to be a lot of adverse reactions but now nothing because of the newer formulations is nothing to worry about uh, injectable or ivs uh, i mean iron transfusions uh, there is nothing to worry about so in very severe cases or emergency cases uh, you know we have to give whole blood of prbc transfusion itself packed red blood cell transfusion only in the initial stages when if patient's blood i mean iron is really not going to help if the hb is so low like 2 3 4 and all if it's less than 6 hb then we'll have to um, give blood transfusions so we will suffice so i'll talk about the oral therapy of iron in the oral therapy of iron deficiency ascorbic acid increases the oral iron absorption okay so you can always advise you can give you can take iron tablets with fruit juices you can take it with it it will help in better iron absorption but dose is usually not in um, okay so and then secondly it should not be be careful that they don't take it with any phytate components like cereals grains or tannin components like tea or any antacids all this will hinder or uh, hinder with the iron absorption in the body so these things must be kept in mind and must be counseled and advised to the patient so once you start uh, oral iron therapy 
uh, the, if, when, by when can you see a response, you know, once the patient starts taking a therapy. So the reticulocyte count, the peak level of the reticulocyte count will be within seven to 10 days. Uh, there can be, there'll be an increase in the hemoglobin and the hematocrit within 14 to 21 days, you can see results. And um, a patient can reach a normal hemoglobin and hematocrit by two months of onset of oral iron therapy. And uh, a normal iron stores, for iron stores to replenish, it takes, it, they'll have to be on medications for at least six months for the iron stores to be replenished. So about after four or five months, they can even reach up to getting even normal iron stores in the body. So here is a graph where you can see both hemoglobin response as well as MCV, mean corpuscular volume response, both they parallel uh, parallel to each other after iron replacement. So now coming to the indications for uh, IV iron. So uh, indications for IV iron uh, is that uh, one thing I want to say is that ferritin uh, is also an inflammatory marker. So if patient has any underlying inflammatory condition, it could be that ferritin levels are raised because of the underlying inflammatory condition. So because that is a drawback or a negative point when it comes to seeing iron deficiency, iron deficiency because ferritin is an inflammatory marker, it can give some, uh, you'll have to think twice there. Okay, for inflammatory conditions, it, uh, ferritin is also an inflammatory marker you must keep in mind. So now coming to the indications for iron, IV iron. So severe symptomatic anemia requires accelerated erythropoiesis. And uh, so if the patient has a failure of oral iron, the patient from the GI, due to GI intolerance, patient cannot tolerate uh, oral iron, uh, then uh, it's an indication for giving IV iron. Okay, severe GI intolerance is there. Or a patient has symptomatic anemia, which requires accelerated erythropoiesis. Uh, if there's a failure of uh, oral line due to absorption issues, like a patient has H. pylori infection, any uh, gastric infections, autoimmune gastritis, any absor malabsorption syndromes like celiac disease, a patient has had a gastric bypass surgery, any inflammatory bowel disease, any uh, bowel resections or any surgeries has been down has been done in the GIT. Uh, if a patient is a cancer or patient is having any chemotherapy associated anemia. A patient has an anemia of chronic renal disease, uh, like TKD patients uh, with or without dialysis. A uh, patient is having any heavy ongoing GI or menstrual blood losses. So all these in such conditions, a patient can be given an option for IV iron therapy. So. Then, um, and also I would like to um, mention, um, um, okay, just one point I want to mention in the oral iron therapy, usually the tablet forms that come is usually 200 mg ferrous sulfate. Okay, so all that will have around 50 mg of elemental iron. That is the amount of iron that can, that will be absorbed by the body. Okay, so just one point I want to mention on that. So intravenous iron formulations coming to that. Here we have a high molecular weight iron dextran. It is not routinely used anymore because of a much poorer safety profile like anaphylactoid reactions in comparison with newer iron preparations. Uh, so right now we use low molecular weight iron dextran that is found to be safe. Uh, so we have to calculate always the hemoglobin, uh, the iron deficit. What is the hemoglobin de iron deficit that we have? So we can calculate it uh, through uh, this formula. That is body weight of the patient in kgs into 2.3 into 15 minus the patient's hemoglobin uh, plus 500 or 1000 milligram for the iron stores. Okay, so... Here usually, um, 
Uh, this parenteral iron is used in two ways. Okay, either it can be administered. One way is to administer the total dose of iron required to correct the hemoglobin deficit and provide the patient with at least 500 milligram of iron stores. The second way what you can do is you can give iron, IV iron in repeated small doses of parenteral iron over a, a protracted period. So the latter approach that is giving repeated small doses is uh, more common in dialysis centers uh, where so where um, um, you know where, where iron is given over a slow low dose is given over 10 weeks sometimes 100 mg of elemental iron is given over 10 weeks okay um, to augment the response of the recombinant erythropoietin therapy so this is the uh, this is how you calculate the uh, the iron needed by an individual is calculated by the following formula where you calculate the iron deficit for that person through this formula that there is body weight into 2.3 into 15 minus the patient's hemoglobin plus the 500 or 1000 mg for the stores so here is just a, a table where you can see uh, the different forms of uh, iv iron that is available you have the low molecular weight iron dextran, and the iron sucrose formulation we have the ferric gluconate formulation the ferrumoxitol and the ferox ferric carboxy maltose formulation so here certain drugs are expenses these are like not expensive uh, where are the indications you can where where all you can give it in iron deficiency anemia purely or in ckd patients chronic kidney disease patients which all preparations you can give uh, low molecular iron dextran may need a test dose but the others really don't require a test dose it's found to be it's or it's proven to be the newer formulations are proven to have very uh, they don't really have any uh, side effects at all or any adverse or anaphylactoid reactions so um, coming to the conclusion uh, so iron deficiency anemia is highly prevalent especially in india where we need to really uh, think about our think uh, consciously think about our diet uh, and consciously take an iron rich food uh, but it's an easily treatable condition. Oral iron therapies are most effective, mostly equivalent in efficacy. Even oral iron therapies are good, good enough if there is a proper tolerance and absorption is good is good. And the way to take it also must be kept in mind so that the absorption is not hindered. And infusion reactions are very low in iron IV iron products, other than high molecular weight dextran. And the costs and indications for therapy are also important to help decide the best IV iron re replacement for a replacement product for a patient. So I think I just covered the essentials for this topic of iron deficiency anemia. If any doubts, do let me know. Okay, I'll take it as there's no doubts. Okay, then thank you.